Hi everyone, I'm Swing. I'm a photographer as well as an art educator. The artwork we are going to do today is related to maps. Hmm. And what we're going to do together looks like this. Let's take a look at a photograph in the National Gallery Singapore by Lim Kuang Ling. What do you see? I can see a person walking down a path. Do you see any shapes or patterns? We are going to be looking at the shapes found in actual maps for this piece of artwork. Alright, let's take a look at the materials which we will need. We need watercolour paper, a printed map. You can look for a map online. Maybe you can choose a place where you like the intersection of the roads. Or it can also be a place that you are familiar with. We need to have a piece of tracing paper. Pencil. A dark pencil will be really useful. Brushes. Watercolour paint, palette, couple of glasses, masking tapes, as well as some markers. And with this, we are ready to go. Alright, let's just put the painting materials aside. This is the map that I have chosen. And you can see there are some main roads which are quite wide. Those in dark grey. And there are some smaller roads which are, I think, in white. Alright, so I'm going to put the tracing paper over and using my different colored markers I am just going to locate where are the main roads which I will use a color in this case yellow to just trace over All right so I can see this broad expressway over here I can also see there are some main roads which are in grey as well as some cutting across over here and let me just use a different colour for the smaller roads. There's a lot more of those so I will just maybe start by tracing those on top and as we do this you can see that we are breaking up the space into smaller parts there's no need to trace the roads exactly as you see them. Right? If you wish to make some changes, feel free to just experiment. Yes, I think we have got very much all the smaller roads, or the main smaller roads traced as well. So we have got uh, the main roads and the smaller roads coloured like that on a tracing paper. Now the intention is to take this and transfer our roads onto the watercolour paper. Alright, so let me just uh, prepare to do that. Let me just put the watercolour paper aside. So how do we transfer it over? Real simple. I'm going to use a real dark pencil. Alright, so we have a 6B pencil. And I remember that the yellow no, the yellow roads are the ones which are wider. Right? So I'm just going to maybe draw two lines to show that they are the maybe the major expressways. They are wider. Right? And for the smaller roads, I will just trace them over once. I hope that you had seen me flipping the tracing paper over just now. So this is the underside. And because we use the coloured markers, it's also quite easy to check that we have got all the lines covered. Or should I say traced. Okay, now I'm ready to do the transfer. This is my watercolour paper. All right. So this is the part where I had just traced. And I'm going to flip it and align it to my watercolour paper. So... What I'm going to do now is that I am going to use the back of the pencil and go over those parts which I have uh, traced by adding some pressure. All right, so let's take a look. You can see there are some faint lines being transferred over. A bit of the scratching sound.
this is a way to check whether we have got all the lines there. I think we've got most of the lines, but not all of them too. Right, so if there are any parts which are a bit uh, like broken, we can just use the pencil to just lightly draw it. So again, we are using the actual map and we can see lots of shapes created when the roads, whether big or small, intersect with different parts of the space. Maybe we'll just extend the roads all the way to the end of the paper. Right, so there's this line which is a bit faint. And all right. So with all the lines transferred, the next part is to start taping them down with masking tape. Right, so I have got uh, two rows of masking tape over here. I will use the broader one to just tape the main roads. So, because I do not want the roads to be coloured later when we apply the watercolour. It will be easier if you break it up into smaller parts. And you can see that I'm trying to follow the curvature of the roads. Right, and then when it comes to the end, we can just tear it off. One over here. It will take a while, but we will get all the large and small roads all taped up like that. Alright, so what I've done just now is that I have used a, uh, a more narrow masking tape for the smaller roads and I have also increased the width of some of the much wider roads like the expressway. Right, so the masked areas of course will not touch the paint and that's where we can uh, not have any paint on the, on the roads when we remove the masking tape later. Okay, so let me just uh, start by maybe um, mixing these two colors. I have a bit of uh, blue as well as yellow and I wish to make some green. So I'm going to use a wet on wet method by wetting the surface of uh, some areas. So there are so many shapes which are enclosed by the different roads. So uh, we can imagine that this is a new town and you're going to maybe design some green spaces. So where would you want to put the green spaces? Maybe I will want to put it here. Right, so let's just start with one. Let's have another green space here. Uh, let's find a few more. Maybe one over here. And we just continue doing that. Maybe a couple of pockets over here. And here. All right, so it's useful to have a piece of um, kitchen towel at the side. Right, so maybe we are quite satisfied with the amount of green spaces we have and for the remaining spaces I'm just going to paint them with uh, yellow. Right, so just like in our neighborhood there are green spaces like parks where you can take walks with your family and lots of people like to go for runs. We we'll keep doing this until we cover the entire space except for those which were already masked with uh, tape. Alright, so all the different pockets or should I say the areas between the roads are all covered. So we just have to wait for a while so that the watercolour can dry. Alright, I think it looks quite dry now. And the next step is for us to start uh, removing the masking tape. So as we remove the masking tape, just do it quite uh, slowly and you can see that underneath it is not painted. All right, so we just have to be patient and remove it one at a time. 
All right, so we have finally removed all the tape. And you can see that there's still some traces of the pencil marking. Uh, we'll just quickly erase them. And you can see some shapes left behind. And the unpainted parts are the roads. Some of them bigger than the others. Or should I say wider? There we have it. And now we are ready to go to the next step. Let me just get hold of my marker. And let me just outline all the shapes which I see. All right, so now we have got all the shapes outlined. And I am going to start filling the inside of these shapes with uh, some patterns. And I am going to start by uh, the green spaces. All right, that's where we started off with. And I am going to start drawing maybe many circles. Imagine if you were a bird flying across the space. You see many trees. Maybe they will look like circles too. Some of them will be bigger, some smaller. All right, so we have done all the green spaces. Let's make another pattern for other uh, areas. Mm, so other than trees, there will also be a lot of uh, flats. So I'm just going to draw maybe rectangles. All right, so we have different kind of patterns being filled in different areas. So we just do one more. All right. So we don't have to fill up all the areas with patterns. We can just leave some of them as they are. Um, and I think it's time to fill up some road names. So if you look at the original map, and different roads, there will be names. And um, well, instead of doing that, I suggest that we imagine taking a walk in the neighborhood and think about the things that we will see and maybe write those on the roads. So for example, um, when walking around, we will see lots of people. And sometimes when I take a walk, I will see people bringing their pets out like cats and dogs. And when we look around, there are things like um, shops and schools. We see lots of plants and we see things like birds chirping or we can hear them chirping. I hope you had enjoyed creating an artwork based on the idea of pattern spaces and paths. Do come to the National Gallery Singapore and see Lim Kuang Ling's original photo. Have fun and see you. Mm -hmm.